Welcome to the Fall Turf Festival here at Gulfstream Park West. Ron Nicoletti and Pete Speedy Aiello with me uh, here today. We got a fast main track from Turf Course. And uh, before we get started, Pete, uh, I remember something about you yesterday saying speed would be no good. And every time I looked at a race, it looked like the horse on or near the front end was going to win. Well, I guess uh, the lunch special here today at Gulfstream Park West is crow pie, and I'm going to have a nice big slice of it. I do have to eat some crow yesterday. The track bias was not as how I predicted it. I'm not so sure there was really a track bias, but certainly if you had speed, you were not hampered by the racetrack yesterday. And was formful except for a couple of races, and one of the horses you gave right out on the show uh, paid $119 to win. That's a good news. That's good news because I didn't have a winner the rest of the day. So at least if you bet two dollars on him, we got out. So we uh, didn't have to go to the ATM. Well, our first race today, uh, we'll get started with this uh, handicapping seminar with our first race, seven and a half furlongs on the turf. And uh, this is uh, Phillies and Mares, non-winners of two in life, $12,500. And we want to go back and show you a performance uh, from last time on uh, blending in that race to see uh, what happened during the stretch run. And you'll watch it here. Blending is the uh, number 10 in that particular race. And you see this horse uh, keeps getting hit left-handed and comes over and, and bothers some horses. Is in its stretch, Pete. This was textbook DQ here, Stewards 101. The 10 impedes the progress of the 6 while continuing to drift. Now, watch, this is where it becomes relevant. The 6 is going to get caught for second. So the 10 definitely cost the 6 second money, and for that was disqualified from first and placed third, uh, moving Princess Zafira up to the victory. Blending is a horse in here that does have some form. There's a lot of horses in here that kind of have been racing against each other. I didn't really have a strong opinion here. I backed into the number 10. Scratch the one here, by the way, fans. Scratch the one, Brina's song. So I back into the 10, Lady Joyful. I drew a line through her last race. I think her race two back certainly merits consideration here. But this is a very, very tough race. I will tell you that my betting strategy will be to spread in this race as I have a stronger opinion in race two. Well, I went with the number nine blending uh, that we just showed you. It's last race when it was disqualified. This one, was, it started, I just thought this horse, besides it drifting out in the stretch there, ran a really good race. So I'm going to give this horse one more chance to score in here today. Then I used the two-horse Little Miss Sure Shot. I had to check uh, when uh, blending drifted in in that race. was actually uh, finished third and was placed the second. So maybe with a clean trip, uh, this horse can run better. And the five, a Little Zoe on the bottom of my ticket. Uh, a really, uh, I like the maiden win back on September 5th. Goes back to the grass today after finishing a four wide second that was a race move to a sloppy track i thought that horse ran good enough in its maiden victory against these two lifetime foes that he would be okay today well the seven horse miss kit mambo is somewhat intriguing to me she's going to be a big price and yes i realize she's won for 31 but she doesn't uh, usually and uh, never disgraces when did herself. that ever stop you well i never see exactly <laughs> touche but again we have jesus rios on board rider switch from juan leva and diego gomez to jesus rios uh, I don't know if you would use the term mark or sucker, however you want to put it, but I'm a huge Jesus Rios fan. So if he's going to ride a horse that I can make a case for at a big price, I will use that Philly number seven, Miss Kent Mambo. But again, my strategy is to spread in this race because I like a horse in race two. Okay, we got to see what he has to say about race two. I'm excited now. This one, five furlong maiden Philly, two-year-olds under special weight conditions, one scratch in race number six. Lasting friendships. I did go, go with the two red sundress, but Pete went with the inside horse in here, number one, Gato Dorado. I like her quite a bit in here. She was de debuted for trainer Jose Pynchon, the same guy who brought you holy well to win the Florida Sire Stakes. She ran against a very, very talented filly, at least in my opinion. Our sassy last debuted at Gulfstream Park, ran second in a maiden special weight, was then thrown to the dogs in the Florida Sire Stakes as a maiden, did not perform well that day, came back to run in the race where she beat Gato Dorado, and she handed her her lunch, beating her nine lengths. Now, the thing about it is, is our sassy last was a maiden special weight and then some in that field. So the rise in class, to me, is not really a rise in class. Gato Dorado draws the inside with Orlando Boca Chica. His aggressive style with an inside post should prove no trouble, and I think that she has a big license to improve, though in my opinion, she doesn't really need to because a key scratch here, scratch number six, lasting friendships, who I deem to be her big rival. I like Gato Dorado. She'll be my key in the early double.
Well, I went with the number two horse on top, Red Sundress. Just missed in its debut at this same level and distance. That was on the wet track. It was sealed. It was listed as good. It was a really rainy day that day. Uh, Trainer to Tom Monte. He's got Ramsey Zimmerman riding today. And I, I just think that Red Sundress off that performance uh, deserves the top spot. Have the one horse got a Dorado for all the reasons you mentioned. I didn't think there was uh, much of a rise in class in there. And I'm amazed that we both have it on the ticket there. And I close it out with the three, uh, like a charm move to the Oscar Gonzalez Bond. He's a new person person on the scene here still watching how he handles his uh recent claims he finished third this horse uh that was against twenty five thousand dollar maiden stepping up a little bit today a horse you could use for minor fringe exotic plays maybe the first time or the five silver sassy juan arias does very very good work here in south florida and he's based here at gulfstream park west so i think the home field advantage with wesley henry up you'll get a good price i'm not saying she can win the race but uh, against this field i think she has a chance at a big number to complete your exotics well, let's go to race number three. This is six furlongs, three-year-olds and up. Non-winners of two races in life. The claiming price is $35,000. And, Pete, I went with the five. Uh, just a little evil debuts locally after coming within a neck of defeating $40,000 two lifetime. Of course, it's trained by Marcus Vitale. He's been on fire down here. He's got Orlando Boca Chica, had a riding double yesterday. And uh, Marcus Vitale sent with the 31 to 60 day layoff. Just been, go the barn's been going really good. Sure has. And number five, just a little evil. From South Florida, believe it or not. When he made his U U.S. debut from Puerto Rico, our fact checker, Ed Gray, was very, very well up on that situation. We got almost an $8 mutual that afternoon. I don't think we'll get $8 here today. I picked against Just a Little Evil just because of that. I figure he'll be heavily, heavily favored, and I just tried to beat him. I'm not saying that what I have come up with is anything world-beating, but number two, Shining Powers, uh, takes a decent to move here to, from the 25 non-2, 35 non-2, as you touched on, Ronnie. Non-2 is non-2. Shining Powers will be handled today by Jesus Rios, and Rock Diamond, the winner of that last race, was a well-meant dropper from the barn of Kirk Zadie. Yeah, and that one of two horses in the race for Gustavo Delgado, and if you're not familiar with the name, he just won the summer riding uh, trainer title, excuse me, across town at Gulfstream Park, and he's got the other horse, and he's got uh, Shining Powers, and he also has the one clear status, and this one is going to the dirt after a really a nice five furlong maiden score on the turf, got first time Lasix in there, and I just think that you have to pay attention to this barn and you're getting uh, two in here they're not coupled but uh, I think you got to watch both well I don't want to exa exactly go on the record like I did yesterday but if the racetrack can is conducive to closers <laughs> famous last words right I think this is a race where you'll see one there's a lot of speed signed on in here and uh, I'm going to try to get it from off the speed He's going to keep this up till they start closing from off the pace here. I yeah, that I'll right say, I told you so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Our fourth race this afternoon, six furlong maiden claimers, Phillies and mares, three and up, $8,000. Jockey change on the number six, make the rider Gary Bain. I went with the eight of Fleet Alley. How'd you see the race, Pete? I saw it the same way as you did. I think the top three in here, safely to say, are the five, the eight, and the nine. Uh, given those three as the key contenders, I went with the longest of the three, the five valid wildfire. Not exactly a horse you like to play, taking a huge class drop off a Van Doff angle, but I think that uh, if she's right, she should be good enough to be a big player in this race. Interesting to note, uh, we don't have a backtrack for the Ada Fleet Halley. That's somewhat my fault now to come to think of it. But this filly, she has to be on the rail. If you watched her last two races, and if you have not, go back and watch it, especially that race two back. She doesn't do any running until they drop her over to the rail. So, Edgar Zayas, if you're hearing this, you definitely want to <laughs> ride this filly on the inside turning for home. She definitely picks up the bit when she's inside. Now he's a jocks agent. Let's go. The fifth race this afternoon, seven and a half furlongs on the turf, two-year-olds, and we want to go back and show you a video. And Pete, you take this one. This was one that you uh, spotted. Yeah, I think there's two horses in here that both have a big chance in this race. You agree. They're both on mm -hmm. your and my ticket. The mm -hmm. two Flaming Hot Salsa and the 11 Catalina Red. Catalina Red's the horse to focus on, and the white face there on the outside in the Chad Stewart colors swings out for the drive there and, and actually has to alter course right there when just starting to get some momentum going. Still finishes with interest in Chad Stewart. 
Stewart is very, very good with these horses. They improve start after start after start. And you can see Catalina Red is making ground that day. Actually outruns Flaming Hot Salsa, who was back fourth. I think that these two horses both have a big look, stretching out around two turns. I don't necessarily like the 11 post for uh, Catalina Red, but I do definitely like the race that she comes out of and the performance she put in that day. Flaming Hot Salsa gets the rider switch to future Hall of Famer, although is he in the Hall of Fame already? This is an Ed Gray question. Edgar Prado rides Flaming Hot Salsa with blinkers on this afternoon. Uh, well, I went with that. I have both of those, as you mentioned, on my ticket, but I started it off with the five K Coast Express. This one's cutting back slightly to seven and a half furlongs. Set the pace last time out. I thought this horse was on its way to victory. Just got nailed at the wire. That was a going a mile. It was a turf course listed as good. The trainer is Kathy Ritfo. We got Manuel Cruz in there today. They could throttle this horse down a little bit, maybe even take it off the pace a little bit. I think it can run pretty good in there. Well, the five to K Coast Express has done something that nobody else in this race has done. She's he's raced two two turns on the grass with success. Nobody's raced two turns on the grass in this race, let alone with success. So certainly I understand your point there. Well, let's go to our sixth race of the afternoon, and this is a one-mile event. We mentioned this yesterday, guys that wouldn't handicapping over at the Gulfstream. When you come to Gulfstream Park, the one-mile race is now two turns, no longer a one-turn mile. Where you have that one-mile circumference over at the uh, uh, Gulfstream now. What was that word? Circumference? <laughs> circumference, <laughs> uh, I meant there we to go. say. <laughs> he caught me there. So we went, uh, so it's two turns, right? Two can we, turns. Can we two agree turns. on that? This, this is a key part of my <laughs> handicapping prowess for for race number six. The two turns will help the 10, Indigo Red, and it will help her big, big time. We actually have a backtrack to show you of Indigo Red. She's been racing over at Gulfstream Park. Her form here at Gulfstream West is very, very good. She likes this surface. She's only been worse than second one time over seven outings over the Gulfstream West surface, and her race is at Gulfstream Park. We touched on it yesterday. They're two different surfaces, but she's been able to handle both of them. The thing about Indigo Red, as you touched on, Ronnie, she's been running a one-turn mile she wants two turns. We'll take a look at her replay from last time out at Gulfstream Park. She's uh, way back there trying to close ground, and she does end up making a lot of ground. You can see her there from well back. She's the five horse starting to close ground late at the even money winner in Sarateria. But to Indigo Red did close good ground that day to be third. And uh, she that's just the way she does things. She likes to drop well, well off the speed and come running. I think the one or two turn mile will help her do that with a lot more success than she's had lately. Jesus Rios rides. Again, if he has a good day, so will I. <laughs> Number three, Sartaria. You know, this horse, if you look at his past performances, only time it ran a bad race was in the slop. I don't think it's going to be his problem today. You know, he didn't handle the sloppy conditions. I just think this horse can run well, and that's number three, Sartaria. I also use the seven divining and the six fit flap. Well, the one horse is kind of a big price and a, a horse to consider here based off the strength of the horses for courses play, weather permitting under jockey Luca Panici. This horse has been uh, very aggressively placed a couple of starts back at Gulfstream Park off the strength of some very, very good races here at Gulfstream Park West. This is another horse that does his best running from well off the speed, but her form at Gulfstream West is definitely something to consider. Yes, I realize you have to excuse pretty much three months worth of races, and that's not always easy easy because horses definitely are on form cycles on and off, so it's kind of tough to uh, discern which uh, weather permitting we're going to get, but that's also why we gamble, and that's also why you get a nice price. And I like the fact that we have uh, six horses up there, and not one of them the same, so uh, one of those races where, uh, you know what, I usually come out on top, but we'll see how that works out are we, today. Are we visiting pancakes? <laughs> we have Denny's down the road. <laughs> The seventh race, one mile. We're going back to that firm turf course. Three-year-olds and up, non-winners of three in life. $10,000. Scratch the 112 and 14. And note the jockey on the five is Luca Panici. And I went with the number six as fate would have it because it moved to the Peter Walderbahn via the claim that was back on August 15. Goes back to the turf. This horse, four previous races on the turf. Two seconds and two-thirds. Walder, you know his, his ability to make him run very well off the claim. He's 27%. It's got Edgar Prado in the saddle. I just think this horse is sitting on a winning performance, and I like the fact that it's got some uh, ability on the turf, as we know, by that 4 for 4 in the money record. In the money record, I agree with that. That was kind of my problem with his fate would have it. He doesn't seem to want to seal the deal. As you touched on, if Peter Walder is any kind of trainer, which we know that he is, he can get horses to get over that mental hump. This horse has 21 second and third place finishes combined out of just 34 races. That's very good. Yes, he's very consistent. 
but he's very consistent at being in a minor placing. I did not use him on my ticket. I like horses like that to uh, try to beat. But again, you bet against Peter Walter off the claim at your own risk. So I'm not talking anybody off of the number six. I'm just saying that he's not my kind of horse. My kind of horse is the 10. Spirit of Dixie makes a huge rider switch here today, and I do mean huge because, in my opinion, jockey Leandro Goncalves, who has relocated his tack to South Florida in anticipation of the champions meet, this guy, in my view, is in the top five of turf riders in all of North America. You can laugh at me. You can tell me I'm silly. Whatever you want to tell me, I'm sticking by that opinion. Leandro Goncalves is a very very good turf rider, and he's familiar with South Florida grass courses uh, from uh, his past stakes events here in Gulfstream Park West and Gulfstream Park as well. He was also a mainstay at Tampa, so he can get around a turf course like this. Spirit of Dixie gets a huge rider switch and comes off a race two back on turf that would make him a big, uh, big contender here. Thanks, silly. Uh, the nine horse in here, Yankee Kitten, will make its local debut. It's the first start since defeating $7,500 two lifetime claimers who was at Ellis, it was on August 16th, but got a really nice, if you happen to be a buyer aficionado, got a 78 buyer win in that race. It's Wesley Ward. He's pretty good with the 31 to 60 day layoff, about 20 cents. Manuel Cruz in the irons. You know, this horse looks like, you know, when you go to these kind of conditions, three lifetime, two lifetime, they're conditioned races. I don't think this hike in competition, even though it says $7,500 at Ellis, is a jump up in competition. I there. agree completely. Lifetime conditions are lifetime conditions, but you just set me up beautifully to talk about your second play or your third play and my second play the 11 drove a road because this horse is taking a massive drop in class almost a scary drop in class as after facing allowance horses the last two times look at those running lines mellow fellow heiko definitely a horse that ed gray likes to play and golden jason from the ed coletti barn who has stakes quality on his best game now you're in for ten thousand. that's a scary drop off the layoff but it's definitely a drop to take note of when you have horses like you're talking about that are facing lifetime Claimers, time in and time out. I, I just was afraid of that huge drop. It seemed just a little precarious, six, 62500 down to $10,000 against all that good company that you were mentioning. We're going to flip the page and go to the eighth race, and this is a seven furlong sprint, and it's claim is three and up. Claiming price is $8,000, and we do have one scratch in here of the five distinctive pick. I went with the 11, Becky's Kitten. You went with the number 10 horse in here, No Act, and No Act ran pretty good last time. Yeah, actually, No Act, in my opinion, was somewhat disappointing last time because he was so perfectly tripped. He actually laid much closer than he usually does, and he didn't couldn't outrun Becky's Kitten, so... That's kind of a concern because Becky's kitten, obviously, with your top billing, is definitely the horse to beat in the race. But again, it comes back down to wagering value. I, yes, I realize that no act has not beat Becky's kitten uh, in each of their last two outings, but that also means I'm going to get a better price. This is a different surface. No act is a five-time winner over this surface. This horse performs very, very well. He gets from way back, though. He's going to need to trip out under jockey Manuel Cruz. But I think that I, if you get the no act that ran last time, he has a chance to win it today. Well, I also have the number one Karate Jack on my ticket. This one responded in the first start after the claim by who else? Marcus Vitale. See, my, I'm part of his fan club here. He defeated $6,250 claimers going three-quarters of a mile. Today, he's got the rail. Um, you know, if you listen to me, I'm not an amid. When horses break from the rail and the seven furlong shoot yesterday, by, by saying that on the air here, one horse went off to win by like 18 lengths. So, uh, you know, it's not the greatest uh, spot in the world, but it's not certainly not the worst. And I, I just think that this horse, uh, second off the claim, might be somewhere on the ticket. Well, I think that the, the rail won't be any problem for Karate Jack because he wants to go to the front anyway. So, if anything, he'll be inside and on the lead. The only thing I worry about him is getting the seven-eighth trip over this new surface. Uh, I did not use him on my ticket. I used the seven from the Ralph Zadie barn smoking the field. He's a horse that has proven himself over this race course. I don't know that he's a winning type horse, but he's definitely a horse to uh, consider to use underneath in your exactus tries and supers. Race nine, one mile, one sixteenth on the grass allowance. Phillies and mares, three year olds and up. Really nice race. Scratch the number 12, so silver. How did you see it, Pete? I want you to say the name of the horse first before I massacre it. Well, I'm actually going to have to go on Forvo.com. That's the announcer cheat sheet uh, website to try to get pronunciations for this horse. I'm going to go with the Blonde Peque or the Blonde Peque, something of that, of that nature. She's a Giants Causeway filly who has last raced last year 
on the Aqueduct Turf Course, previously handled by Christophe Clement. Ordinarily, I would deviate away from a horse that was previously handled by one of the best in the business on the turf in Christophe Clement, but you move to the Gustavo Delgado barn, and Gustavo's been doing very, very well with everything that he saddled. As you touched on, he just comes off the training victory at Gulfstream Park. The layoff is a concern. Edgar Zayas on board is a very big feather in the cap of this filly, and uh, she does appear to me to be a horse that uh, you could use in your multi-leg wagers. And, and just a note on that, uh, 35% with new additions to his bond. We're talking about Gustavo Delgado. Uh, we have our second and third selections flip-flopped here. I went with the 10 and second, Wonderfully Wild. Ships down from Mohamed for Marcus Vitale after coming within the nose of winning an allowance. That was going a mile in the 16th. Really nice performance, and I really don't think you can separate the 10 or the one horse in the Acambiata. I mean, that's where the exacta box or trifecta box comes in. Well, Cambiata gets Leandro Goncalves, which is why she Cambiata ended up second on my ticket instead of the 10 Wonderfully Wild. Cambiata is intriguing because last time out, Ramsey Zimmerman, he set her out on a big winging ant type lead and it worked for him. So uh, if Leandro Goncalves is listening to this, the last time this Philly ran, she was loose on top a big, big way and they didn't even try to rate her and she won easily. Our last race on of the uh Thursday card, six furlongs, maiden, claimers, three and up, $8,000, scratch the 12. Come on, Charlie. And we have, I have the number five on top, and you went with the number three in here, Captain's Game. These are, you know, a lot, a lot of low price horses for you today. I'm waiting for the 80, 90 to one shots. Well, this race definitely could produce a price of that magnitude, which is why I kind of try to, again, get away from some of the more logical types. Captain's Game is a horse that has some uh, South Florida experience. Actually finished a good second in his most recent racing here at Gulfstream West. Has come to, uh, by way of Presque Isle Downs in Erie, PA. Comes off the tapita surface. Should be ready to rock and roll. Trainer Norman Pointer. Welcome back to South Florida to Norman Pointer. I'm using Captain's Game on top in a wide open nightcap today. Well, you see our selections up there for the final race. Uh, Pete, they're giving us the signal to get the heck out of here. Any final thoughts? Uh, final thoughts are that you definitely want to continue to play horses that have uh, some form cycles to them. Big numbers all day yesterday. Possibility for it again today. Good luck, everybody.